United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Agenda. I'd accept a motion for that, please. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item four delegations. Do we have any audits? Item five, old business, there is none. Item six, new business, <coughs> update. All right, I just have a few things, and we've, we've got some lunch break, which is going to be uh, great uh, for our night tonight, before we go on our, our holiday break. Uh, looking at our um, enrollment, we are up four from November, uh, knowing that we're Kind of in that um, realm of, of fluctuating uh, attendance and enrollment uh, that's a good sign for us starting the year at uh, 2139 we're at 10 students so overall the students here and there um, that's a positive um, piece for us we'll, we'll see some more fluctuations but again our, our thoughts and, and uh, efforts go towards making sure that we're trying to hold our enrollment steady and, and gain uh, when possible. Um, we do have our what's great and uh, Annie Ox is here to share that with us. Yes, so I have our what's great. Is Zane helped this evening? No? Okay. Um, so Zane is Mr. Horde. Um, was going to introduce Zane, um, or student Zane. I know just from reading, I think it's State Band um, Jazz Band, yeah. And so um, he was going to be one of our guests this evening. But I do know that the HMS um, Career Club is here. So if Mr. Grantham or and or Ms. Deering want to introduce us to our Career Club students that are here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so a couple years ago, we started a real world learning program, uh, careers class, to kind of give our kids some idea of what was out there and available. Uh, squared out a little bit the first year, but uh, we brought Ms. Deering over from the high school and just really took it off. It's, it's a great program. Uh, this year, we started the career club to kind of really isolate uh, some young people who are really interested in, in doing some work outside the school and really help the school and the community. <clears throat> so. We couldn't bring everybody. We had about 20 kids uh, lined up, so we, we got it down to four. Um, and these are the, the officers of the club. So I'm gonna call them up here and they're gonna come up. And when you guys come up, introduce who came to see you, okay? Don't be shy and ignore your family like middle schoolers. All right, make sure you, you announce them. So, uh, and then Miss Mary is gonna tell them kind of what, they're, what they've been doing. So uh, at this time, we'll bring up Duncan Boyd. Come on up, Duncan. Avery Spangler. Come on, Avery. Riley Shaw and Michaela Becker and then Taylor Hollingsworth couldn't make it she's she's in the doctor's office right now unfortunately so okay I'm up here guys no up in front here no I'm in front come on around here there you go come on up make a wall pardon me so I, there you go all right guys I'm one of the representatives here talking about career club from HMI. Uh, my career choice is construction management. Um, hi, I'm Riley Shaw. Um, 
for Club is the Golden Summit this year. Uh, it's next year they were third, third in class, um, and they had a win. Also, I have to put Mr. Grant on for having us here, and my career code is Canadian Dollar. Oh, it's principal. <laughs> um, my name is Wingler. There's 16 members in the club right now, and it's the students that were enrolled in the class at the beginning of the semester. And my career code is a banana. My name is Michaela Becker. Career Club currently has two groups that meet weekly with the students who may be involved in various activities, such as sports, uh, practices, or other activities. My career choice is nurse anesthetist. So, Career Club meets at two times one at 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, and then one on Tuesday, uh, on Thursdays in the afternoon right after school. <laughs> the motto, motto for Career Club is service and learning. We plan our projects around those attributes. One of our activities, we were involved in creating boards for the Veterans Day Assembly. During, during this, <laughs> My bad. But in addition to the boards, we put up patriotic decorations outside to set aside individuals to welcome our guests. Each guest also received a thank you card for themselves with a note that they could pass along to any other veteran in the room. Um, these boards included research and information on all the branches of the military. We also included moments in every day about the branches of the military and service to the nation. We also helped set up the hospitality table with cookies and drinks for our guests, which included taking everything down and cleaning the area up once everything was over. Career Club individually escorted all guests to the gym. During, we sat together during the program, and together as a club, we raised over $200 for housing in the, for veterans in the Kansas City area. Another of our service projects is we collected candy and goods to create tree bags. On the last home game of our HMS football games, we passed out candy bags to both uh, the opposing team and our team. Yeah, we passed out over 700 tree bags, uh, both on nursing side and the side for all the families and the children. Um, this semester, Career Club helped set up and clean um, stations and hospitality tables for our monthly new day for career exploration students. We also were there to meet and welcome any new guests as they arrived. As a school, we participated in a camp to drive for our community. We had our own challenge. I personally won the award for bringing the most hands in with a total of 120 new hands. Close. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> During career club, I offered the suggestion to bring Halloween books and donate them to Children's Mercy during this holiday season. <laughs> career club. <laughs> Is also responsible for the setup and cleanup of this this assembly. Is December sixth. Our we had our career club. We were responsible for the setup and cleanup of that, um, which included the hospitality table where we greeted each of our guests. Um, each guest had the opportunity to vote on at least seven students in four areas on a scale from one to five. Uh, these areas included portfolio presentations, portfolio organization, presentation board design, and oral communication. During the semester, I was in charge of meal planning for the morning group as well as setting up communication for the entire group. I also hosted a career fair Christmas banquet at my house where our career club awards were presented. In the future, we would like to plan the possibility of taking field trips to areas and businesses to learn about career opportunities. We are currently working through logistics and funding for these options. Career club members have also helped other students during this semester. We hope you enjoyed learning about our new club Thank you again for this opportunity to share. Hold on, oh, I think I think she dropped. Oh yeah, this is my family, the one with the red hair. <laughs> that's my little brother, Connor Boy. And then that's my dad, he's amazing. His name is Dustin. Um, this is my little brother Easton, my mom, Annie Springer, and then my stepdad, Brandon Costin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Both my parents, my mom and my dad, those two right here, and they're glad he's um, making me to fully do it. My mom, Ashton Becker, with a yellow shirt on back there. Thank you. Also, I think we're trying to uh, establish just uh, some soft skills, shaking hands, making eye contact, and so 
if you had a chance to come to our career uh, display, we had it, it was incredible. Uh, far out from the, the community, but if you had a chance to come to that, you would have saw them treating you and doing those things because they're really working hard across the board on those real world learning and soft skills. So. Is yeah. this just for eighth grade? Just eighth grade, yeah. Yeah, right now. Uh, Mrs. Deering, can you come back up for just a second? Because I have some questions. Okay. <laughs> when you get a new group of students next semester, will the club kind of turn over, or is the expectation the club will kind of stick together and then go? We had that vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, through um, uh, majority rules, um, <laughs> We thought that it would be fair, so next semester there will obviously be a new set of kids. Those kids, if they will have the option to join career club. If they decide that that is something that they would like to do, basically, they would go to Ms. Deering. Ms. Deering would say, okay, they would write down their name, and then it would go through a voting system. We would identify their strengths, their weaknesses, how can they help this, and then decide whether they are invited into it or we can decline them. Hmm. This group decided on their own um, that even after the semester, they want to continue throughout the year. That includes the 6 a.m. group and the Thursday afternoon group. So they meet twice a week, and they are committed. They beat me there before 6 a.m. to get into the building. They are a solid group of leaders. Um, I'm excited to see what they're going to be like by the time the seniors. They are incredible. Well, kudos to the parents for getting them out there. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to just uh, comment on the fact that um, as a Qantas member, um, we have individuals from our uh, group that come over and do the mock interviews. And I heard this last year, I heard it this year, and I know I'll continue to hear it, how impressive our students are when it comes to doing their mock interviews. They just blow everybody away. These are business members mm -hmm. of our community, and uh, it just makes me so proud to know we have these students here in our district. It makes me proud. Every single time it happens, um, I feel like a proud grandma of all of them. They are incredible. Um, and I don't know if you got a chance to see it. It was posted when we had the career fair. Um, Judge Collins was there, Avery's grandpa, and he sent out a Facebook post saying how proud he was to see what young people were doing. That we hear the negative all the time, but in order to just come in to the school and see the positive things these kids are doing, just gave him hope, and it, and it is true. They are incredible. No, I can speak for the ladies who participated. Yes, yeah. Even though Kawan is trying to take over. And what organization are you with? The Rotary Club. Very dedicated group. They do. You guys all come in and just give your time and attention to the students. And it's one thing to be the teacher. And you know, and they're going to say, well, of course, Mrs. Jerry Parks are going to tell us we're fabulous. But when community members come in, and validate that and so that you also know because career club was um, in the career fair all day they had a separate voting system um, Duncan received 514 votes in one day on his board and his presentation oh, yes. but all of them um, received over 300 in that day so they are they are incredible they really are wonderful and thank you for your leadership mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having Any other questions for me? Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you guys for allowing us to show off. Mm -hmm. uh, would you four students mind standing in front of the backdrop here and take some pictures? Come on. Thank you. We've got rotary or line. Oh, we're getting more hands in there. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's Westview. Turn your head around. That's Westview. You've got the best lunch. Thank you, Karen.
Yeah, you do not have to hang around. You do not wish to. If you want to keep going with our regular board meetings, please. I can thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you. And I just want to also thank Avery's parents for hosting for hosting the Christmas banquet. It was it was a blast. We had a good time. Come on. Yeah, so our next, um, what's great, is the HHS Science Club uh, went and visited the uh, some third graders at HES, and so some members of the club went to help with a hands-on science project. The students watched a video about plant life, and then they made hairy heads using soil, grass seeds, stockings, and googly eyes. And um, I did hear some very fun stories that came from, from that. And our last one is just um, a shout out to our partnership with the Harris Mill Police Department. Um, we truly appreciate our partnership with the Harris Mill Police Department beyond supporting us to keep our students uh, and staff safe. They're highly involved with our students from High Five Fridays at ECC to the ongoing partnerships with our HHS broadcast students who put together the Shop of the Cop video each year um, to their work with our HHS Traction organization. Uh, it's truly a positive relationship for our entire community that we have as a district with the Harrison Police Department. So we very much appreciate them. All good things. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. We will go to 6B, strategic plan update. So we talked about um, our work with our strategic strategic plan facilitator and uh, Dr. Parkhurst and Ms. Filer are working to kind of get our team together and hopefully by the end of January we'll we'll have everybody ready and uh, start the planning process. Great, looking forward to that process. Um, I have a C finance update. Deb. Um. As of the end of November, our fiscal year is 42% complete. Um, revenues were coming in at 22% of our budget, um, which is comparable to last year. Um, one um, item to note that we did receive the um, payout on the cell tower base mm -hmm. during the month of November, so that was $410,000. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been invested in our MOCAC um, operating. On their, their, mm -hmm. um, their accrued interest rate on that. So, um, and then just a, a note in December, we did receive our first um, large payment from property tax proceeds of a little over three million. So that um, will be significantly more next month. Um, on the expenditure side of things, we're looking at 32% of our budget. Um, Compared to last year, the expenditures are up about a million dollars um, in funds one and two, but that's mainly due to um, salaries and benefits, transportation, and then we had quite a few repairs and maintenance maintenance here to date. Um, so, and that includes like our asphalt and concrete projects with some of them in there. So that would be good. Um, um, fund balance wise, um, we're sitting at 25% compared to 20% last. And our total cash and investments are at 13.1 million. Um, just a little update on the bond project. We have made our last payment to the Euford Novak. So that um, bond projects are pretty much done. We still have about fifty thousand dollars of stadium work to do on the retaining wall, and Joe's working on that for the spring to be able to do that. Um, so overall, um, that we had about 26 and a half million um, in expenditures and those were paid from bond proceeds and interest of about 24.7 million and the rest was 1.8 million in grants. So um, we came in um, within budget, I'm not the whole scope of that project. And um, we still have about 185,000 in some grant reimbursement. Um, um, but we cannot get that reimbursement for all the projects that are on the grant 
on that yes. seat. That I can't remember what the name of the grant was. The oh. the Mako grant. Yeah. Yeah. So that would include part of the HVAC work, right. um, and that part of that project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So um, one hundred eighty-five thousand of that would go towards would come towards the bond project. So. Yeah. Very good. Two years in budget. <laughs> yeah, that. That's great. Thank yeah. you very much. Any questions for this? Thank you. Student assessment data item B. I have our assistant superintendent of academics here. Uh, Mrs. Ross is going to give us um, an update on our <coughs> math and EOC scores. You remember. Uh, that we reviewed these um, in closed as a because they were not um, public data at that time. Uh, the data was released on Monday to everybody into the public yesterday, and so we have it today. We uh, have that prepared just so that we can review our 22 22. <coughs> this was our end of year data that we did from last. So um, we're going to start off with our elementary ELA. Um, these are just the percentages of our students who scored proficient in for and or and advanced. So you'll see um, in the dark blue is third grade, light blue is fourth, and gray is fifth grade. Uh, over from 2019 to 23, you'll notice on every graph that 2020 is not there because we did not do the state assessments in 2020. So just to kind of help you a little bit when we go through these, you can track a cohort by, if you look at 21 um, through third, moving from the dark blue to the light blue to the gray. So if you wanna see from student cohorts, you can see how, like in 2021, our third graders were at 43.9%, in 22, they were at 42.7%, and in 23, 43.6%, just kind of for a visual. So, um, the, they are, there they are, and um, we at least have a good baseline for moving up. Um, so I'll go through kind of our slides, and then whatever questions you, you all have at the end. So next, you'll see our elementary math. Again, all of these are just based off of our percentages of proficient uh, or advanced scores. Um, so you can see our math scores, again, from 19 to 23. Here's fifth grade science. Science, uh, the first time that our students take the map uh, assessment in the area of science is in fifth grade. So they'll take it in fifth grade and then again in eighth grade and then they'll take it as science EOC. And you'll see those here in just a minute. Here's our middle school. This is again ELA for six, seven, and eight. Again, it's the same color um, so you can kind of visually track a cohort uh, for ELA as well. This is math. Um, you'll see on here also that we've added a dark gray. This is Algebra 1 uh, EOC that is taken in 8th grade. So our students that are in pre-algebra in 7th grade, they take algebra as an 8th grader and they take that EOC while in 8th grade as opposed to taking it um, well when they attend a high school. So there are our, are our EOC scores as well as our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, those EOC scores are typically, uh, that EOC score is typically higher because those are using our higher um, math kiddos that are in math that Algebra 1 has. Do you have any idea on that one, uh, Annie, when you look back at the, the 2022 to 23? I mean, that's a pretty significant drop off, though, even in uh, Algebra 1. Yeah, so I've um, I've done a little bit of digging into multiple uh, data points that we had. You'll also notice from our 22 when they were um, seventh grade into our 23 when they become eighth grade, the 25.3 to the 9.9, .9, we saw a significant drop also in that cohort of kids. Um, even even just our regular pre-algebra math kids are, that took the eighth grade math assessment. And when you look down to sixth grade for them, you'll see kind of a steady, we're seeing a steady decline with their performance. Um, and that's similar to ELA for them as well. So uh, it could just be 
I like to look at it as opposed from year to year. I like to look at cohorts of kids because then you can you're comparing the same students' performance each each year. Um, unfortunately for our our scores and like for APR, I mean, it's kind of year to year, but it's based off of weekly growth percentages as well. Can I can I add something that didn't we look at that as well? Uh, we really felt like that was also our largest algebra class we ever had. Uh, we we feel like we probably pushed some kids that were on the bubble into algebra that probably shouldn't have been in there. And so we really kind of tightened up our um, screening process this year. Um, so that was kind of one. So, so if you, you look at those scores, we took kids from the 9.9, which probably should have been there, and moved them into algebra, and they, they hurt us on the OC in that sense. Uh, and they struggled. And we did, you know, we pushed them hard, and they got RTI and stuff, but we probably had 20% that probably shouldn't have been in algebra one. So those kids that were in Algebra 1, then as they became freshmen, did they retake Algebra 1, or did they move on to Geometry? We, left, we kind of left with them yep. and their parents, yeah. Yep. Typically, the, the goal, and, the, and again, uh, Mr. Grantham is right, in that thought of choosing the right students, we choose that right student when you head into high school, we want them to take Geometry, the next one is Algebra 2, then they're taking the Algebra 2 the OC. If you have a student that is just taking that map, map, eighth grade math test, they would go into then algebra one when they move into high school, and then they would take the algebra one to OC, but they would not get the um, the cost of, of algebra two to take that to OC because they have to take the one math to OC in high school, and that can be algebra. Um, so, also, there was iReady was implemented last year in math at the middle school, and so sometimes you'll see a, a little bit of a dip, um, not that significant. But that's why I like to go back and look at the cohort, and this cohort, this current freshman cohort, seems to be trending down um, in <coughs> academic performance. So it's definitely something that we are paying close attention to and looking at what levels of support we need to we need to put in place there, and. We're doing it at different, trying different things, different levels. So, the next one should be eighth grade science. And you'll see again our uh, eighth grade currently is at 23.28%. Uh, so, here is high school. This is the EOC Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. So, the Algebra 1 students, those are your students that didn't take. Algebra 1 as an 8th grader and took that EOC. We saw a significant increase, um, still not where we want to be, but we did see a significant increase in our Algebra 1 students last year. Um, and uh, Algebra 2 is it fell off there after 2021, and so we, and we haven't recovered from there. So we're looking at our Algebra 2. We're also looking, uh, I've worked with um, Mark Rorvig and Valerie has, we We've met several times with the math team to really look at our Algebra 1 and how we have that divided up. There's different options between Algebra 1A, Algebra 1B, without getting in the weeds, just really looking at the purpose of that and then how and why is it laid out the way that it is and how um, do we need to better plan and, and uh, address standards so that we can see an increase in our performance of our kids at the high school in our Algebra 1 EOC. So we are working with that, working on that currently by reviewing the current text that they're using and then looking at standards as well. So Valerie's been working really hard on that question. And so is our, our high school math teachers have been really great to work with. Here is our uh, English 2 um, EOC at the high school. And here's Bio 1. So um, changes that we've already started uh, middle of the year this year, some of them right out of the gate, but others um, we started just to try to, to get our wrap our minds around establishing a pretty solid baseline for me and for Valerie and Abby. Um, we had we did the implementation of the K three reading success plan, plan, which was a state requirement, but it has also kind of helped us 
um, really dig in deep to our Title I reading and how those services look. We're working on revising, um, kind of not necessarily revising, but coming up with a plan for our Title I eligibility and what do those services look like, K-5, uh, while also addressing our reading success plans of our, our K-3 students that are identified as a year below um, in different areas of our state. We have the addition of curriculum specialists, which has been an amazing, um, a very positive thing for us just to help keep this work alive and uh, help implement um, different things that are that we've we've already started working through, as well as uh, making sure that teachers are feeling supported and teachers are feeling connected to the work that we're doing, which has been really helpful. Um, and it's been a lot a lot of work so far, but uh, I, I feel like we truly made the best hires that we could for those positions, and it's, it's working out really well. Standard alignment, in fact, yesterday, um, we sat down at a table all day long and worked on standard alignment in ELA and math, starting in kindergarten all the way up through um, 12th grade, just making sure that we are genuinely aligning our units of instruction to Missouri essential standards, and then identifying those priority standards within those essential that we are going to ensure that all students at any grade level um, meet mastery in. So um, with that then comes unit planning and, and really looking at what we are teaching and ensuring that everybody is teaching within a grade level um, the same unit of instruction so that it's not necessarily a teacher lottery. It doesn't matter whose classroom you're in, you can guarantee that what they are teaching is aligned to standards and using the same resources. Um, and this does not take away from the art of teaching. The how you do it is still individualized for how teachers teach, um, the way that they teach it, but just ensuring that we can, we can guarantee that we are all teaching the same thing. We also started using Evaluate, which is a monthly um, assessment that students log on to, and it is aligned to Missouri Learning Standards. It's been extremely helpful to try to connect all of this work together and to help um, teachers and administrators and us see like where are our gaps, our resource gaps, and how are we going to work on plugging things in. So those are the things that we've already started working on this year. Um, and so far, so good. So I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Um, Annie didn't beat around the bush either, but she tried to um, make sure that it was as, as calm as possible that this is not really on me. Uh, it's not okay. Our principals know this and they're working very hard on uh, connecting with the teachers, the work that they're doing. This has nothing to do with our teachers are out there doing the wrong thing. It's about working together to find the right thing to be able to do in our classrooms. The work that we've been doing is realizing that you cannot teach everything. You have to figure out what is the most important for success in that grade, and then we'll support the success in the, the next grade. Those are essential standards, and we're working all over it. Because if you were to teach everything that a kid needs to know, kindergarten through 12th grade, they would need 22 years of, of instruction. We don't have that. So we have to determine what is the most important. And the most successful schools do not teach everything. They make sure they find the most important things and they teach them well. And that's what we're going to do. I've talked with our staff. You guys were there when we did our kickoff. That realization that this is not an accurate representation of our students and their success. We have amazing students. You just saw some of them here right now. That picture of who they are and that those scores need to be closer together. Right. I'm not going to come into this uh, role and say we have to be the best. It has it's all about the MAP scores and the EOC scores. That's not that doesn't develop a well-rounded institution of education. But we do need to know that it's important because those are the pieces that make sure people are coming. Where do I want to go? If I have a chance to move and I'm moving somewhere, <coughs> I'm going to look at scores. I'm going to look at those things. And it makes a difference when we're sitting here talking about getting enrollment where we want it to be. We have to have an accurate, accurate representation of the hard work and effort of our staff because they do work hard. The principals that are out there will say their teachers work hard and they're the best at what they do. We just need to prioritize focus on what needs to be done in the classroom, and 
and I'll guarantee those things will not be those same pictures that we're seeing because that is not the representation of our kids. This is our MSIT 6. Uh, this is the way districts are graded. So last year was the first time that we had MSIT 6. Those of you who have been around uh, for a while, we had MSIT 5, we had MSIT 4. So we had different uh, approaches to this. But this is our second year of MSIT 6, and this is a great card from last year. So it's representative of what happened last year. You can see that in 2022, our overall score down there on the total, we had 130.9 out of 180 possible points to give us a 72.7%. Now, the way they look at it is if you're 95 and above, then you are in the high achieving. There are two districts in the state that have received that. 70 to 94.9 is in the average, and then below 70, uh, 69.9 and below, are in an area of academic uh, need or support. You'll see that this year, uh, from last, from the 2022 to the 2023, we went up. So that's a 74.2. Um, again, not exactly where we want to be. But I'll, uh, as I've shared before, this is a game that has to be played appropriately. And there's just some things that we have to make sure that we uh, don't leave out. We've got to cross our T's and dot our I's. And everybody's already on top of that. And so we're really looking forward to what's going to happen for next year. The biggest thing that's going to make an impact on us is that performance piece. So um, the way we used to be measured in MSIT 5 is they had status or growth. So that was based on your scores, or if you grew a lot, then they would give you more points because of that. Districts that were doing well consistently just stayed on status, and so they were doing okay, and there was no problems. But they really didn't have any growth. Well, for us, we had some growth in there. You saw some up and downs in that, and so we were able to get our scores based on that. Well, right now, we don't, we don't have the growth. We kind of saw that downward trend, and so it's not showing growth. So we're going to receive uh, a significant number more points because of our growth that we're going to be making this year. Just by simple changes that we're already doing, we will see some of our growth points coming up. And again, we're not looking for us to be at a 94 or 95, but we want to be up there in that, that 80 percentile range, really at the, the top third of all the schools in the state. And I, I really feel like we'll be there shortly. Uh, but this is a great way for us to say, you know, we're continuing to grow. From 22 to 23, we did uh, go up. You, we had talked before this was um, uh, public. And we talked about that we actually went down, but we did receive some extra points from the state based on some of the things that we did do. Uh, the ICAP, um, Mr. Grantham, he's like, we did all of these pieces. We did what we needed to, but it didn't hit the reporting just right, but we did it. And so they counted that for us. And so that's why we went up. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to where we're going. And again, uh, our, our job is to make sure that as you support our district, we are performing uh, to the support that you're giving us. So uh, we're looking forward to the next uh, year and where we're going uh, with our M66 results. So, are there any questions? Yeah, I'm just curious. What goes into the for continuous improvement to account for that? So that's a good one. That's attendance. Um, that's our career and college readiness. Uh, it's testing that we do. It's CTE. It's our strategic plan that's all turned in. So a lot of things, MSIP 6 is different because nothing ever was on continuous improvement. We didn't give points for that. It was their way of saying, how can a district tell its narrative by, it's not all just test scores. And so with our strategic plan, talking about what we're doing, doing the little pieces, that's a continuous improvement that a district actually has control over. <clears throat> so that's an area that we know. Uh, again, just some of those little points that we can get by doing some things, uh, we'll make sure that we get that. Another thing I want to tell you guys is um, I ran the numbers for our uh, 
conference. So, uh, so for our conference, uh, we are setting six out of 13. Um, yes, Josh, six out of 13 is not where we like to be. We like to be either at the top or close to the top. And in looking at that, we're just a few percentage points away from being right up there close to the top. Our top competitor uh, at 80.2% 80, 80, 80 was Pleasant Hill. And um, I, I believe a lot of that um, was just the diligence of making sure that they get the things that they need done. And again, we're making those uh, changes for next year as well. So we don't want to be six. The one question I have just generally looking through it is, I'm sure I'm not going to wordsmith it appropriate, but it almost looks like we've gone backwards to the point where we're real, our kids are really behind and then how do you ever end up catching up without, I mean, you've got a group that's that's going to be doing well and then you've got groups that are really far behind and how do you ever catch them up and make them so successful? So part of it is, too, this is just one snapshot. Like it's just the, the end assessment evaluate. One of the pieces that we have put in place already is evaluate um, looks exactly like the map test because some of the map test is testing new strategies. So we are looking at is this true like skill gap? Is there is there a gap, a learning gap of some sort, or is this we didn't play the game the right way? And and we'll figure that out too as we dig deeper. But. Um, any change at any level is going to lend itself to better results than where we are. So I, I personally am not too concerned with like that we're going to have a significant learning gap as opposed to making sure, ensuring that our kids are, are getting standards taught to them at, at a high grade level that is appropriate for them so that when they get to the map test, they have the opportunity to show what they have been taught at grade level at grade level that they've already been exposed to. And it's just right because what happens is if we constantly think about the gap, the before, then that's where we'll always be trying to catch up. But we've got to teach our kids on grade level what they need to know so that they get that so that they're successful in the next grade level instead of us always trying to fill holes, make sure they're ready for that grade level and they're successful in that grade we will catch them up where they need to be because that's where the interventions come in. If we do our job, those pieces will be filled in the appropriate amount of time. Well, we look forward to this time next year. Yeah, I get you. I'm glad, I'm glad you did. It's I, a challenge for sure. Yeah. And, and I know you're up for it. Yeah, I am. And I know this all is, of you are. This is not something that's, um, that Harrisonville is in alone. There's all sorts of districts that are in the same game trying to figure things out. And we are really moving in the right direction. When I talk about professional <coughs> learning communities and those things that make us work together, this job cannot be done in isolation. And so many times we talk about what needs to be done and our teachers take that on personally and they work it in isolation. How am I going to help to do this? We can't do it alone, we have to do it together. And when we talk about being together, collective advocacy, that's where we're going to go above and beyond as we help each other get better. Okay. Thanks for coming together. Yes, thank you for all that information. Okay, we will move on to 6E, Echo Right Contract Amendment. I would accept the motion, please. Move to approve <clears throat> the proposal for bus driver pay from Echo Ride as presented. Second. Question, discussion? I do want to remind everyone that this increase will be covered by our transportation reimbursement we get from the state. So that is a good thing. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Item 6F, Assessment and Evaluation of District Programs. So we have the Wellness Program Evaluation. Yes, we were fortunate to meet a couple weeks ago. Um, you guys have had the opportunity to review the report. Do you guys have any questions, comments? I did have a question. 
about the vending machines at all. Because I know when we did our vending machine contract, I specifically asked if there would be healthy foods in those vending machines. And I believe I was told yes. There are, there are healthy items. I think that what we need to do is make sure that we evaluate what other items that there are, which is what generally the kids will lean well, towards. Yes, and then uh, communicate that effectively to the vending machine company to okay. stock it appropriately. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's that's something that we're gonna take care of. Thank you. Yes. And we also need to look at the branding and make sure that the branding is in line with our district wellness policies. What do you mean the branding? Um, we need um, wellness approved items. Um, like give me an example. On the, uh, you should have water instead of Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. Yeah. They have Mountain Dew every day. No, 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 those are the examples. I can say, please. All right. <laughs> yeah, the branding on the side. Okay. Uh -huh. That was brought up at the, at the wellness. And it is a good meeting. Good. 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 Are there any other questions? This is the information thing. We're not. Thank you for all of your hard work on that. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn the meeting. All right, 7.6 p.m. Second. <laughs> all those in favor, please signify by aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion or motion. Meeting is good. Very good, everyone.